Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and hello to all my friends on the um, Environment and Public Works Committee. I think Sheldon occasionally says that because he can't remember if it's North or South Dakota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah you betcha. <laughs> it's not East or West? <laughs> <laughs> Um, good morning, Chairman Barrasso. If it's a road or if it's an island, yes. <laughs> or soon to be. Um, good morning, Chairman Barrasso. Right, no fair, all you Westerners ganging up on me. <laughs> I'm going to start over now. Good morning, Chairman Barrasso, Ranking Member Carper, and um, all of my friends and colleagues on this committee. I want to thank you so much for the invitation to testify on this um, uh, uh, Use It Act, util Utilizing Significant Emissions with Innovative Technologies Act. And I just want to make a point that for generation after generation, we have seen CO2 as a, as a pollutant. And um, the efforts that this committee, in a very bipartisan way, and our group of four have really tried to change, turn the page and start looking at CO2 as an opportunity and as a legitimate and valuable byproduct. So, uh, Senator Barrasso, I want to thank you so much and your staff for um, your incredible work on this and making it a priority of your office and um, inviting me and, and allowing me to be part of that work. Um, Senators Whitehouse and Capito, um, your continued work and partnership in these efforts on carbon capture, uh, carbon capture utilization and storage initiatives, that leadership um, continues um, beyond the work that we did on our uh, Future Act, and we know that these new policies can create an environment in which innovation and implementation of CCUS technologies and processes are allowed to thrive and grow. Um, with the, much has already been said about the Future Act. It was one cog in that wheel, and we know that we need to make sure that we can commercialize the work that's being done, that we can continue to drive the technology um, in ways that will um, amaze and astonish people um, out in, uh, in the country. Um, when we talk about the challenges of how to implement the policies that would encourage CCUS this, in this country, it was clear that closing the financing gap through the Future Act was critically, but merely doing that one piece wasn't enough. It was uh, before this very same committee last year where the Future Act was being discussed during a hearing on expanding and accelerating the deployment and use of CCUS, and questions were posed to the witnesses about what additional challenges existed and what further policies we needed to promote these um, CCUS. The response was clear. There needed to be a comprehensive approach that looked across the entire federal and state regulatory policies to better coordinate and establish an environment where CCUS projects are not burdened by long lead times or duplicative and unnecessary regulations, and that we needed to build out the infrastructure necessary to move the CO2 from the source to those areas that are best able to utilize it as a byproduct. As a result of that hearing, Chairman Barrasso took the lead on addressing some of those very concerns, and I happily joined him and my colleagues, Senators Whitehouse and Capito, in that effort. The Use It Act directs EPA and CEQ to prioritize and taking, take lead roles at the federal level in supporting CCUS and direct air capture research and establishing guidance for project developers and operators that will allow better coordination and facilitation of these projects. It also clarified that existing policies facilitating the build out of infrastructure projects are applicable to CCUS projects and CO2 pipelines. While I will admit I am biased when it comes to advancing this bill and these policies, North Dakota is at the forefront of, a, uh, of developing CCUS projects if the right conditions are met. As of yesterday, we are the first state in the country that has been authorized by EPA to regulate class five injection wells. We have three CCUS projects at various stages of planning. Red Trail Energy in Richardson is looking to capture and store CO2 from an ethanol plant. Project Trunda, Tundra, I'll get it right. Project Tundra is looking to add carbon capture equipment to the back end of an existing coal-fired power plant and the alum cycle project that could be fueled by synthetic gas produced at our great lignite coal resource in our state. It's, it's really quite amazing. All of these projects are not what we called in the old days vaporware. They are real 
They are being developed every day. They're being invested in by the state and by private entities in the state of North Dakota. So we are ready to go. We're ready to go if the conditions are right. To that point, I would like to submit several records or several uh, letters in support of the Use It Act. Um, I, I want to make this point because I think sometimes we, we talk a lot about um, saving jobs and doing what we can to make sure people stay working. These employers represent thousands of jobs in my state and even more jobs if we look at the indirect benefit of this value-added industry to my state. And so um, I'd like to submit these uh, record or these letters and support. Without objection. This. Thank you. Um, the impressive panel of witnesses that you've assembled to follow me are much better positioned to get further into the details of why this bill addresses some of those challenges laid out in the September hearing. What I can tell you is that I'm certain that these efforts will lead to breakthroughs that provide for economic and employment benefits to our country and provide long-term technological solutions that will allow for the continuation of all of the above energy policy all while addressing climate challenges by greatly reducing carbon emissions. I want to um, make one final statement. I think that um, when, when we are um, looking back at our legislative careers and we're thinking, how do we do? Did we just stand in our corners and shout across, across the void and across the divide? Occasionally, something will come up where we will say, we walked across. We sat down, we figured it out, and we did something that actually made a difference in the United States Congress. I think this effort is exactly that. And I think um, all of us who have worked on this, especially the four of us who have been particularly engaged, um, will have something to uh, talk about. Um, we'll have an example of the kind of leadership that we've exhibited while we're here. And I think this not only has been a wonderful piece of policy, it has been a wonderful example of how friends and colleagues can get together to actually move important policy for the people of this country. And so I proudly join and support all of the, my co-sponsors and I encourage uh, a quick resolution out of this committee and um, hard work on the floor of the uh, Senate to get this thing passed in the United States Senate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Senator Heitkamp. Glad you could join us today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.